and good morning once more. Um, today, the message we are in the Gospel of John, we are looking at the 14th chapter, and we're looking at verses 1 to 14. And this is a very, very important bit of scripture, and we'll see what we can come out of this. Um, we want to remember that we've just come off of Good Shepherd Sunday last week, and we were talking about Jesus being the, the Good Shepherd and being the gate, and, and being the gatekeeper. And so all of these different roles that we were dealing with, and so today we have more roles that we're adding or we're clarifying, perhaps. Uh, so we are again in the Gospel of John. We are in the 14th chapter, and we're going to look at verses 1 to 14. And then I'm going to actually today, I'm going to do what Scotty DeFreeze likes, even though I know Scotty doesn't, uh, isn't able to watch this, but Scotty likes it when I go through um, and, and just kind of work my way through the scripture. And that's the, the method of the message today. Does that make sense? Method of the message? So with that, John 14, 1 to 14. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son, if in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. All right. So let's go back up to the beginning and we'll work our way down through it. And let's just a few, maybe a few twists or turns as I flip things around me just a tiny bit. First of all, do not let your hearts be troubled. Um, and before I jump into this, I should, I should point out, this is a bit of scripture that I have used more than a few times uh, for, for funeral services. This is a very, very comforting uh, bit of scripture, though oftentimes it is, a, we, we, it is not used in its entirety. It, there are inserts or, or ex excerpts rather taken from this uh, and used for, for, for funeral services. But that very beginning part, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. And then about the Father's house and the, the dwelling places being prepared. These are very reassuring things to hear when we have lost a loved one. Um, and it should be reassuring to us in a time of trouble, like we are in a, globally today. First of all, uh, do not let your hearts be troubled. The word troubled there, when we read that in English, you might think, We've got worries, okay, and they could, we could look at that and think that they wouldn't necessarily be large worries. Trouble kind of it, it makes one feel like that you're maybe just slightly agitated or slightly slightly uh, uh, upset or what have you. But in Greek, it means stirred up, thrown side to side. It's not just a little bit of trouble; it's fairly violent. And so we understand: let not your your hearts be thrown side to side as you are tossed and turned and, and mixed up and all of that. And so it, there's much more action in that, in, in, in the way that it is in the Greek. So we understand, let, do not be like that. We need to be at peace. Uh, the next part, believe in God, believe also in me. The word that's translated there uh, as believe, um, 
can mean believe, and it's oftentimes, and pretty much, uh, I think in most translations uh, in this book of scripture, it's translated as believe. But it means faith, and it also means entrust with, entrust in God, entrust yourself also in me. Entrusting is a little more in depth than just believing. I can believe that it's going to be a nice day, but I'm not going to necessarily go out uh, without any kind of precaution. Um, you know, I, I, I took you know. I, I, I believe it's not going to rain today, let's put it that way. But if I'm going to go on a long journey, I may want to take something along with me in case it does rain, let's put it that way. So entrusting yourself, that, that, that's, that's very, very deep. That's a deep and powerful uh, emotion or commitment. It's really a commitment more than anything else. Commit yourself to God. Commit yourself also to me. So right there, Jesus is is, is equating himself to God. If you have trust in God, if you believe in God, if you have faith in God, if you believe, you have trust, you put your faith in me as well. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. Now, the word that is translated in, in, in the NRSV as dwelling places is sometimes translated as mansions. Um, it can be, it can be a, all kinds of um, things. It doesn't have to be a mansion. It means a place to dwell. Um, if it were not so, I would have told you that I go to prepare a place for you. Now, the place there is, is an interesting word. Um, it can mean a region. It can mean a seat, somewhere to sit down, somewhere to place yourself. But it also can mean an opportunity. I go to prepare an opportunity for you, an opportunity to be with God. And what better opportunity, what more blessed opportunity could you have? Than that to be in that place in that seat in that opportunity it's interesting sometimes when we have Greek and we look when we look at the Greek and we try to ferret out all of the different nuances because it is a English can be a nuanced language but not like Greek and if I go and prepare a place for you I will come again and will take you to myself and the word there that is translated as take you uh, means admit acknowledge or to receive I will receive you to myself I will acknowledge you we remember last week when we talked about Jesus being the gatekeeper and the shepherd and the way he was the pathway to go through the gate is the gate is what the, is the gatekeeper the gate and the, and the shepherd but you hear Jesus is the gate this is the way to my set you to myself you receive, receive in yourself. There is a very, it's, it's hard to, to um, misinterpret the intimacy of all of this. And I should back up just a bit when it talks about preparing a place for you, preparing a dwelling for you. Um, that is reminiscent there, uh, believed to be reminiscent by many, that that is talking about when, when a couple, and we oftentimes talk about Jesus being the bridegroom, right? And us being, the, the church being his bride. And in ancient times, uh, in Hebrew culture, uh, if space allowed, where the home was located, um, when, a, when a son was, 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 was betrothed to a girl, and usually that happened uh, when they're quite young, before the, the engage, official engagement started, but during the one year period prior to the actual wedding, they were considered to be married, even though she still lived with her family, he lived with his family. But during that period of time, if space allowed here at his family's home, he would be either creating a space within the home for him and his new wife, or they would be building on to the home. So this is a period of time for preparation for this new relationship this new addition to the family. So Jesus is going to prepare a place for you. He's preparing a place to bring you into the family. It's a very inclusive and, and bringing together, and again, an extraordinarily intimate thing, especially when you look at the take you to myself and realize that it can also mean receive you to myself. And so it's, it's very, I mean, it's hard for us in a physical form to really appreciate the intimacy of the spiritual 
So that where I am, there you may be also. Again, extraordinarily intimate. You, wherever Jesus is, you are. And you know the way to the place where I'm going. And then Thomas is, is rebutting him. And of course, poor Thomas gets the, the, all of the, the, the bad lines, doesn't he, in the dialogue where he, he's looking like he doesn't understand. But the reality is, is that when we look at all of the disciples, they all miss the point because Philip does so later as well. Um, but Thomas, who again may have, we talked about in the Doubting Thomas, may or may not have been one of Jesus' brothers. I kind of lean towards the idea that he was one of the brothers. And if that's the case, then he's really perplexed. What are you talking about, brother? Uh, you're talking about going someplace. I, I don't understand this. And then G, he sets the stage. And, and of course, the Doubting Thomas, Thomas sets the stage for Jesus for some of the most profound testimony that he has. Because here in verse 6, we have what most, most people that know anything about Christianity know this line. Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. The way and the truth and the life. We've already talked about Jesus being the gate, right? And, and, and receiving you, taking you uh, into himself. But the way there, the word that is, that is translated as the way, means a way, it means a road, it means a journey, it means a path. Jesus is the way, he's the gate, we pass through him, um, but it's also a journey, it's, and, it's, and it's a way of being. We talk a lot about that we are you know, followers of the way. You remember that was the first name for Christians, was the way. And we are to be the, in the way that Jesus was. But we also understand that we are going through him uh, for salvation. So it's multiple things that it's meaning here. Um, the truth. And again, we, we read that in English and we think, the truth. Yeah, that means it's true, right? Okay, what do we mean about the truth, though? Uh, truth, but not merely truth, has spoken. Truth of idea, reality, sincerity, truth in the moral sphere, Divine truth revealed to man, straightforwardness, is what it means in the Greek. Jesus is the truth. The, the way that he lived and what he's telling us about his relationship to God, we believe to be the absolute truth. We believe that he is the Father, or the Son of the Father, that he is equating himself earlier with God, and in a little bit he equates himself with God. We believe that what he is saying is true in the divinity there. So he is, what he is telling us is the truth. But we also believe that the way that he behaved is the true way to be. We, we believe that that path that we're supposed to follow is the true path. It's the sincere path. It is the real path. It's the, it, it is the spiritual path and the divine path. And so it's wrapped up in all of those things. And especially when we bring the word life there. The word that is there that in Greek that means life and the life is the Greek word Zoe. That's where we get the woman's name Zoe. And this is the Greek form of the Hebrew word that it's very it's appropriate that we have this verse on Mother's Day because the word Zoe, life, comes from the Hebrew word Eve. The word mother is life, the life-giving force. Um, it's just it's life, both physical, present, and spiritual. It is it, there is great meaning to that. So when we uh, it is really appropriate, I think that we have this today on Mother's Day of all days that we're talking about Eve, that uh, and the Eve, the beginning, the renewal. This brings all things forth. So it is I, here we are talking. We can be talking about both physical life and spiritual life. But I believe here Jesus is talking about, well, he's talking about both. Because if we are following his way while we are in this physical world, we are following our life is devoted to him, our physical life, and the way we behave and the things that we do. So we've devoted this life. But beyond that, because we understand that he is the way and that he is going to take us and receive him, us to him, we understand that it's about that physical world and that house or that dwelling place, rather, that he's prepared that he's added on just for us, that is the new life. And so 
that's all wrapped together. It's really difficult to ferret, uh, no, pull it apart. I shouldn't say ferret out, but pull it apart. And then, of course, we come to the completion of that verse. No one comes to the Father except through me. He's already, we've talked about him being the gate. We pass through him. He's the path. We, we need to follow that path. And it's not the way that Jesus lived that is the way to get to the Father. It's through our faith and our entrusting ourselves to Jesus. We've entrusted ourselves to Jesus. We talked about that at the very beginning in verse 1. If we entrust ourselves to Jesus, that is the way we go to the Father. We go through Jesus as the gate, and because he has received and trusts you. That's really, when, you, when we look at it in the Greek, I believe it becomes so much deeper and more meaningful. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, from now on, you do know him, and you have seen him. Again, we have part of the Trinity coming together now, don't we? We have Jesus and God as one. And Philip then, of course, questions him, him there. Um, and he says to him, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. And in Greek, the, that, that word satisfied means enough. That's enough. That's all I, that's all I need. Just show me the Father. I, then I'll entrust you. And of course, Jesus says, you haven't been listening. I've already told you. If you trust the Father, you have to trust me. You have to believe in me. You have to have faith in me. After you've seen me and the way that I've lived and what I've done here and, and all of this, you have truly seen the Father. Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own. Um, the word words there uh, means more than just words. It, it can, is a um, thing spoken, a word or a saying, but it's a command. It's a report. It's a business term. It means, it, so it is, it's, it's official. Let's put it that way. Um, what these important official report commands, whatever that I say to you, are not coming from me, but they come from the Father. And all of that, and through him, through all of that, is what, where Jesus gets the power for all of the works that he has done, because he and the Father are one. And then we come back to the beginning of 11, and we have that word believe. Remember where we, 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 we encountered that in verse 1, and so it's repeated here. And again, it means, in trust in me, believe in me, have faith in me, that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. So he's reiterating it there again. If you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Because of the fact that I'm able to do all of these things that the Father has commanded me to do. If you can't believe my testimony, believe the testimony of the works. Um, we should believe uh, the words of Christ, the glory of the words of Christ. But certainly all of us have seen the works of God in this world. And that's what we get in verse 12. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do. There where it says very truly, um, those are actually, that's actually two words there, but not very truly. Very is there to magnify truly. The word really is truly, truly. And it, in Greek, it's amen, amen. It means most assuredly, verily, truly, paraphrased as we normally think of it as, so let it be. But he's saying, verily, verily, most assuredly, most assuredly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do. Um, and we're going to skip the greater works there, and we're going to jump to the bottom of the, the back, and we'll come back to the greater works, and we'll end with that. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Um, if in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. And there we're going to, I'm going to reference us back to where we ended yesterday uh, in the daily devotions. We ended at the end of 1 John chapter 5 and verse 14. And I think verse 14, and of course, it's very possible that whether it's John or it's the elder or it's the group of elders, the letter of 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, those epistles are written by the same community as the Gospel of John. These, whether they're the same author or not, it's the same 
line of thinking. It's the same theology that's going on in these four documents. In verse 14 of chapter 5 in 1 John, we have some clarification. Because we can read that and say, I will do whatever you ask in my name. And I, I think I mentioned yesterday that I can remember being a little boy and, and hearing people, you know, in Sunday school, that whatever you ask for in my name, you got, you know, God's going to do it for me. That's cool. And so I can remember going home and sitting in my room um, on the floor and, and praying for a new horse. And then I thought, and I stopped and looked around, where's my horse? So I asked for it in Jesus' name, where's my horse? Um, that's not what he's getting at. And yesterday I talked about how the, the, one of the interesting ways to look at that is we pray for our needs, not our greeds, right? And we not only pray for our needs, but more importantly, we pray for this, the needs of the world, the world we live in and the world beyond. We pray for what God's, that God's will be done. And the way it's, verse, it's written in verse 14 and this is the boldness we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And so it's in accordance to his will. It's not in accordance to our will or our desires or our, or our, our pettiness or what have you. It's always about God's will. And when it says boldness there, we have to remember, that's not an arrogance boldness. That is a assured boldness. That's a faith-filled boldness. It means to know that because of our relationship with God that it will be so. Because we have entrusted ourselves to God. Back to verse 1 in 14. Because of that we know that whatever is we pray for it in accordance to His will. And if we're praying for it and we get the answer of yes, no, or maybe or later, rather, not wait, usually the way it's run, yes, no, and wait. Uh, there's not a maybe, it's a wait. Um, we have to accept that as being his will. And we just have to go with that. And now I want to go back to this thing that's a little bit troubling, it should be troubling for us, where it says, in fact, um, it says, excuse me, that I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. Now, right after this, in chapter 14, he has the promise of the, of the, of the Counselor, the Paraclete, the, the Holy Spirit, and so we're leading up to that, so that's about to come. But um, here, we have to remember that we will do greater works. Now, we think of that as Jesus raised the dead. Uh, Jesus cured the blind. Jesus did all of these things. I'm kind of thinking I'm not going to be raising Lazarus from the dead. So let's look at what the word that's translated as greater means. And I think that we'll get a better understanding of it and perhaps a more understanding that we can apply to our own lives and to our other, uh, the rest of our lives. The word translated there as greater is where we get the word mega. Mega, of course, means something it's mega, it's big, you know, colossal. Um, it means large, great, or in the widest sense, meaning that overall. It's not just big, it's overall. It's in the widest sense, in the greatest sense. The works that we do can be in the greatest sense because of the Father, because of our faith, because we've entrusted ourselves, we are doing these works, and these works, remember where he said, if you don't believe in the words I say, believe in the works? And there's that little saying that you may be the Bible, only Bible that someone will ever read. And they don't look at you for the words you say, do they? They look at you for the things you do, and how you live your life. And we are we're faith-driven, we believe in salvation through faith, not salvation through works, but that works is our testimony and our witness and how people see God, Jesus, through our lives. And that is what we will do in the widest sense. That's how 
all of humanity since Jesus and beyond, well beyond us are witnessing and testifying and doing the great, the mega works. And so it's really, a, it, it's really a great responsibility that we have, but it's also an incredible blessing that we have, that we have that faith, that we have that trust, that our lives, that we can entrust our lives to Jesus and we know that no matter what shall come, um, nothing will keep us from that place he's prepared for us as long as we believe in him we have that promise that place to go and that's why this makes such a wonderful piece of scripture to use at a funeral because of that great blessing it is really a wonderful piece of scripture so let's pray Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you very much for the promise of Jesus as the way, uh, the truth and the life, of the, the way that we get to you, the way that we have this, this, this impact in your world, the way that we are able to serve you through him and through the, 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 the words, the strength, and the faith that you've given us. We thank you for this, and we lift it up to you this morning. We ask that you uh, touch the hearts of those that might be listening today, and, and Lord, uh, that we ask that you might touch the hearts of those that witness our lives. We lift this up to you and in your name. 